You're listening to the Catholic Nurse Coach Podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Haugen, wife, mom, nurse, and Catholic life coach. The mission of this podcast is to coach Catholic women who work in healthcare to follow God's plan. Welcome. Today, we are going to be talking about generational trauma, um, things that have been passed down through the generations that necessarily you don't agree with or that you wish would be done differently. And first, I'm going to do a reading from this book called Take Five on the Job Meditations with St. Ignatius, and it's by Mike Aquilna and Father Christy Stubna. And so it just has like a little bit of um, excerpt from um, one of the writings of St. Ignatius, and then a little spot of things to think about and reflect on. And then it has like a reading from the Bible, and then another thing to reflect on. So... We're going to start with that and we'll do prayer and then we will get started talking about some generational issues that just kind of keep continuing the cycle. So making sacrifices for others. The following story adapted from an account by Father Pedro de Ribadera, Ignatius's secretary, shows how far Ignatius would go to comfort friends who were suffering. Ignatius once paid a visit to a former disciple who was very sick and depressed. Out of great charity, Ignatius asked if there was anything he could do to bring happiness into his life and dispel the gloom and sadness he was experiencing. After thinking about it for some time, the sick man said something quite silly. If you could sing a little and dance a little, as I do in your country, in this Kenya, I think it would give me some consolation. Ignatius replied, would that make you happy? Oh, yes, very happy, said the sick man. Ignatius' charity prevailed over his own personal preference and restraint. He figured such a request could only come from a very sick man indeed, and so he did what the sick man asked him to do. When he had finished, he said, Please do not ask me to do that again, because I shall not do it. The sick man was so overjoyed by Ignatius' charity that after he left, the depression that was eating up the sick man's heart was lifted. He began to improve and after a few days was cured. And that's from Pilgrim, um, the writing of Pilgrim 297 to 298. And think about it. I should smile for the sake of others when I would rather not smile. I should not avoid speaking to people I find dull or annoying. The saints, including Ignatius, and especially the Blessed Virgin Mary, will go far to help me when I am suffering. And just imagine, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. The mother of Jesus was there. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Women, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. That's from Gospel of John, chapter 2, verse 1, verses 3 through 5, and verses 7 through 10. And remember, Ignatius' charity prevailed over his own personal preference and restraint. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Please be with us during this day, in these hours, and in these minutes. Please help us to practice charity in the moments that we don't want to and don't feel like it. And we have our own sufferings going on. And please help us to always focus more on you. Please help us to remember that when this life is over, what are the things that really matter? And those are the things that we should be focusing on more in the day-to-day. Please help us to be less distracted with little things. And all you angels and saints, please pray for us. In Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. All right, so I like this reading uh, or this little reflection because it really shows what you can do when you really don't want to do it, right? Like, I'm sure he was like, I don't want to sing and dance. This is ridiculous. (laughs) And you know how many times do our kids ask us to do little silly things? And sometimes we say yes, but most of the time, I know for me, I'm like, uh, no, no, thank you. That's ridiculous. No, I'm not going to do that. Um, 
And so just little sacrifices go a long way. And that kind of brings me into our topic for today. Okay. Somebody had asked me like to talk about what do you do with generational trauma? And I, I can't, you know, I kind of asked for a little bit more clarification and you know, I think, I think even in that she was like, well, it's not really trauma necessarily. It's just more of how different generations were raised and the way they were instructed to do things. And now how you, how you can do things differently when your parents or your grandparents are like, that's wrong. Your kids just need this. Right. And so mostly it, it evolves around our feelings, right? As most things do, we don't do things that we don't like. We don't do things that we feel uncomfortable with. We don't want to do things we have to sacrifice for, which again, why I like that reflection, because a little bit of sacrifice can go a long way. And so with this example that was sent to me, um, this person said, so when they were younger, they were sent to their room, right? Like when, when you were having a temper tantrum or when maybe you even talked back to your parents, or maybe you even just said like, no, I don't want to do that. And they would just send you to your room. Okay. Like I got sent to my room quite a bit. I mean, you know, yeah, I would say quite a bit. Um, and so this person is like, now when my kids overreact, I want them to help help calm them down in a more constructive way, a way that they can cope with the feelings better instead of just suppressing them and being, no, you have to go to your room and hide those emotions until you can come out. And so what she does is she has her kids like take a bubble bath, um, you know, and like calm down, have a more relaxing environment after they get home from school, if they're pretty worked up about things. And so as I was thinking about this, I really want you to be able to first calm down your emotions when you think about this, right? Because just like you're helping your children deal with those emotions as they come up, Oftentimes we don't deal with our emotions. I would say most of the time, 90% of the time, we don't deal with our emotions. And so I want to start with that. Okay. And so if you're driving, don't close your eyes. But if you're listening to this someplace else, like someplace that you can, or even if you want to pause it and come back to it later, like someplace that you can just like for a few moments, two or three minutes, sit down and just close your eyes. Okay. And even if you are driving or wherever you're at, I want you to just relax your body. I want you to take a deep breath. I want you to put your hand on your chest and I want you to feel the rising and falling of your chest with each breath. Notice how it goes up and down. I want you to take a few deeper breaths and notice how your chest rises higher and sink slower. And just do that for a few moments. Focus on your breathing. Focus on the air going into your nostrils. Feel the temperature of the air coming in through your nose. And the temperature as the air leaves your nose. Okay, now that you're calm and more relaxed, I just want you to picture yourself the last time you got upset. Maybe it was with a coworker, maybe it was with a parent, maybe it was with a friend, maybe it was with your children, your husband. And then I want you to picture yourself at eight years old. I want you to feel when you were eight, how you often felt dismissed or betrayed, how unfair life was, how you were told that you don't matter. Maybe not those exact words, but that's what you heard, right? That you don't matter. Your feelings don't matter. Just go to your room. I want you to see her in how you see your child now. See the hurt and the pain. I want you to see 
like picture you, you know, like look at your eight-year-old self and be like, wow, like if that was my daughter, how sad they are, how hurt, how they have all these emotions and feelings and they really don't know what to do with them. Now, again, as you keep continuing to picture yourself as a young girl, what good qualities do you have? Maybe you're very passionate about things. Maybe you have a kindness. Maybe you have a gentle old soul. Hey, like, I want you to see that and see how that is still part of you now. You have all of those things still part of you. You've just been suppressing them. Because whatever the world tells us as a child, part of growing up is to try to protect ourselves. And so maybe you try to control things more because of that. Maybe you try, maybe you always see yourself as the victim. But you still have that goodness inside of you. You just, it's just been underneath we need to peel back the layers like an onion okay and you still think of yourself like you're that little girl that needs to be sent to her her room and I want you to see yourself there and I want you to give yourself a big hug and tell yourself it's okay I want you to reflect on how do you have tools now that you learned from that little girl that helped you? That like, in a way, if you became, if you like to control things now, you have a gift of like organizing things and laying things out and be able to see things differently than another person would. And sometimes that controlling takes over, but it, there's always good in that. There's always good qualities that come from that. Same like if you like to, if you think of yourself as always a victim, right? People are always out to get you. They do this to exclude you. They're just picking on you. They never liked you. All of those things were to preserve yourself. And you think if I'm the victim, then people will like me more because I need them. Okay, so out of that, you can take and be like, how can I take what I've learned as a child? How can I take those qualities that um, maybe sometimes come out not great? How can I take that now and be like, oh yeah, like I like to play that I'm the victim a lot. Wow, I must be really hurt and wounded. And said, so I'm going to turn, I'm going to give that to Jesus. And I'm going to see in the ways that like, I really need him to heal me. Okay, that's what good can come of this right now. What other gifts can you think of? Maybe how you see how you want to be different as a mom compared to the, your childhood, your mom that you had. Maybe you can use that time and you can say, wow, like I, I know that I don't want to do this. But there were some good things that came out that time too that I do want to implement. Maybe you learn to bite your tongue at times. And in a way it worked for a while, right? Like, and now you're like, hey, that tool, I do know how to bite my tongue. Maybe I bite my tongue so much that I'm a people pleaser and I don't speak up for myself. But that is still a good skill that I do know in certain times when it is okay to bite your tongue. Not everybody has that skill. That's an amazing gift that you have from that time in your life. And we often think this shouldn't have happened, right? My parents shouldn't have sent me to my room. They should have, they should have taught me coping skills better. They should have helped me count to 10 or learn all these different things. But when we think that, when we start to think that they should have done this, 
there's a visible shift in our body. We start to tense, at least for me, I start to tense up more. How relaxed I felt by feeling all the gifts and how that time served a purpose and how I can grow from that. How I can see the 10% that was good in that time, even if I don't want to use the other 90%, how I can find the the 10% when I'm calm and relaxed. When I shift and I think they shouldn't have done this, how dare they? This is why I struggle so much. I instantly start feeling tense attention in my arms, in my chest. And when we resist the reality is it makes us angry and bitter. The reality is that did happen. It also gives the past and other people complete control over our life. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to have compassion for your grandparents, parents, or guardians, if it is actual like, abuse and true trauma that you went through, that's different. It is possible to have healing from that. But with that, you would want to seek out a therapist or a counselor. Okay. It can be turned into a gift still, but it takes a little bit more time and work. And so with this, we're, I'm talking about typical childhood, um, being sent to your room, um, I mean, very rarely, like I grew up, there was very rarely maybe a spanking. It was like a little pat on the bottom, you know, um, just very typical. My parents trying to have consequences. Okay. Typical childhood. And I want you to really think how your parents were doing the best that they could. They didn't have all of these workshops and tools and and people coming into workplaces and schools talking about feelings and how, how to manage them. So they were doing the best that they could. And I want you to also think how now you're doing the best that you can, right? And how how will your children see you? Maybe there'll be new tools in the future. Maybe there'll be experts that say, no, everything you guys have been doing for the past 10 to 15 years is absolutely horrible. We're ruining children. We really need to go back to sending them to their rooms. That's the only thing that works. How would you feel if that was, if you felt every time that you went to your children's home in the future that they told you, no, you did it wrong? How could you? And maybe you don't say these exact words to your parents and grandparents when they come over. But when you have a thought, we then have a feeling, right? You instantly start feeling tension and stress in your body. And we act on that. Where there might be eye rolls. There might be snarky comments. There might be a scoff of the shoulders. You might leave the room more often. Okay, like there is, even when you think, well, I didn't say that to them. There is a body language that comes across of, I know better than you and you did it wrong for me. And so that's what I just really want you to have compassion for your parents and for your grandparents or whoever. And really say like, wow, I can really see how their childhood affected them. And they were using the tools they had to raise me the best that they could. And now I'm taking all of that and I'm learning all these new tools to give my kids the best childhood they can have in hopes that they'll go on and like, it'll only get better from here. I have to be the bridge. And just like in the St. Ignatius reflection, like sometimes we have to suffer and it is not easy. It's not easy having your parents come in and say, you should be doing this. They should just be sent to their room. Don't you know this and this? That is hard, 100%. And I want you really to then, in that moment, I want you to think about this podcast and I want you to go back and I want you to take just even a few minutes, a few seconds to just put your hand on your chest and feel your breathing. And feel what emotion has comes up for you when that happens. Okay, you might feel angry, you might feel dismissed, right? 
And then I want you to see like how moving forward, okay, what do I want to feel instead? Maybe when my mother or my mother-in-law comes around, I just want to have such compassion for them. And not compassion. Compassion does not mean being a doormat. Okay. Not compassion to be like, okay, well, they can say whatever they want and do whatever they want to me. No. Compassion in the way that then you have compassion for yourself in saying, okay, this really, really bothers me when they, when they say this, if they say that these are the actions I'm going to take. Maybe it's to ask them to leave. Maybe if you're visiting their house, it's like, okay, kids, five minutes, we're leaving. And you don't have to tell them the boundary that you're setting up, but you just know when you have compassion for them, it also gives you permission to have compassion for yourself and to show up in a way that you never have for yourself, to have your own back. And so when you're in that mo- those moments too, what often happens is we feel... Um, angry, dismissed, resentful, bitter. And then we start lashing out at the kids, right? Or, or maybe we overcompensate and it's like, whatever, you guys can just eat candy for supper because I just, I can't handle it, right? TV, candy, it's fine. Okay. So I really want you to see, I really want you to play out like the most recent thing that has happened that's brought this up for you. And I really want you to say, okay, what happened? And just get curious. I would say have the emotion of curiosity. What things could I have done differently in those moments? Because again, we cannot control anybody else. So your mom, your mother-in-law, like you're not going to be able to be like, well, they should have done this differently. Again, that'll just give them all the power. We're bringing the power back to us. And we're saying, what could I have done differently? Honestly and truly. Maybe it's not realistic to like, leave the house. Maybe they're staying with you for the week, but maybe you can say, Hey, every night I'm going to go to bed early. I'm going to lay in my bed. I'm going to read a book that I love. So I have a little bit of time for myself. Maybe I'm going to make sure that the week that they're there, I'm going to have, I'm going to really try to get all my water in. I'm going to really like focus on the the things that I can choose for myself. I'm going to buy a new pair of fuzzy slippers So I know every time I put on those slippers, like, remember, feel your breathing. It's okay. You're safe. All right. And then, and then maybe with that to then slowly integrate the compassion for them. Okay. Because it really does open up a whole new level of things. It, when you have compassion for somebody, it allows you to see things in a completely different light. Oftentimes you're able to have a discussion with them because you're just really, you're curious and you're compassionate and they're like, wow, like, how did your parent, like, how did you hand, like, what did your parents do for you when you acted out? And then it might be like, oh, it was completely unacceptable. And like, if we even said one more thing, like we got the belt. I'm like, wow, like how, did, how was that for you? How did that feel? You're like, Really, to really have a conversation. But if you're not there yet, that's fine. Do things for you. Hey, do the things that you love. Maybe you wanted to get fast food every night that week because it just makes it easier. You can clean up faster. You can get the kids to bed sooner and you can go back to your room and have your little retreat where you can read your book and have a little, you know, quiet time set up for yourself. Hey, and like, See how your emotions, when they come up, the actions then that come from that, okay? And really just, again, be curious. And again, one more time, you cannot control others. So if you start slipping into that thought of, well, they should do this, and if they do this, this is this, no. Deep breath. What can I do? What can I do? What questions can I ask? How can I de-escalate the situation by maybe just having a simple go-to phrase? Okay. Okay. And then maybe like a few thoughts that maybe that I thought would help during these times, right? As you're thinking about this, as it's coming up, maybe you have relatives coming in for holidays coming up. Okay. And these are some things that you want to work on. A thought is, I don't know what I need, but 
let's start with this. Okay. I don't know what I need. No, let me rephrase that. I do know what I need. Okay. I know what I need. And let's start with this. I know what I need, right? Like I know what I need. Sometimes I'm not willing to do it. Sometimes I don't want to do it. I know what I need. I'm going to start with going to my bedroom every night at eight o'clock after the kids are in bed. Okay. I know what I need. I'm going to ask my husband to put the kids to bed every night when my mother-in-law is here. So I can have a few minutes to just calm down and step away. I know how to navigate this. And maybe if that's too bit of a, of a stretch, maybe you can say, I'm learning to navigate this. Okay. So again, if you want help with this 100% book, a free consult call at catholicnursecoach.com. I will really help you dive in and find some key phrases for you that are really helpful for you. Okay. Um, every situation is a little bit different, but there's always, always, always the underlining theme of like, you, you have this thought, you have a thought that is getting you stuck when this certain person comes around or maybe certain people. And so, especially for the holidays, I encourage you book a call so you can go in with more peace, more compassion, not only peace and compassion for them, but for you. I have such a wonderful holiday season because you really have learned like how to show up for yourself in those moments. So I am praying for you and let's go change our world.